and welcome to Turtle Tracks Podcast. This is your host, Brian Van Hooker, and I'm here with Mark Bodie and Molly Bodie, people who had two very different roles uh, with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, Mark is a very prolific artist who's, uh, for Turtles anyways, did a handful of stories. And and Molly, worked. what was your role at Mirage? Mark? I was the licensing assistant. Okay. For like almost 10 years, so from 90 to 99. Wow, Okay. <laughs> I guess the place to get started is, I mean, when did you guys first meet Peter and Kevin and or go to Mirage? Like, when did that all, how did you guys end up there? Well, um, I was at San Diego Comic Con in 1986. I had already heard about the, uh, the success of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic book. And uh, in fact, um, I was part of that black and white boom that, that happened because of the turtles. Sure. The black and white boom um, had everybody from uh, radioactive black belt hamsters to uh, fish police to, you know, like everything that spurred off of the turtle uh, success. And I, um, Molly and and I were, we're at a, I think it was, uh, we're at a, a carny game somewhere, uh, and we saw a little plate that said Miami Mice, and it was just a little glass plate you would win, you know, when you pitch the ba- the baseball at the jugs. Oh, sure, and, yeah. And she went, hey, that would make a good comic book. And and I said, yeah, it would. <laughs> and, and then, so we went home and I started did my first drawings of the Miami mice and um, that became a huge uh, black and white success um, 180,000 copies sold in one year and uh, and so I was already on that bandwagon when I met Kevin and I had a little bit of guilt about it I was like you know I wasn't too proud you know <laughs> I was like, uh, hey, 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 we're not making money off you, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> off your success. And and uh, he was totally the opposite. He was like, man, I'm such a big fan. You know, like I've been following your dad's stuff, and uh, you know, I've got I've got the the Cheech Wizards and the Junk Waffles, and the you know, he he. There's even a picture of Kevin um, when he first was packing up you know, issue number ones of the turtles. Um, there's a picture of him and Pete packing the books up and he's got a Cheech Wizard shirt on. It's it's in the documentary on TV. But uh, oh, what, what year was that picture? That must have been before you met you? Yeah, yeah. it was like 84, yeah. 85, maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay, so <laughs> for those who don't know, uh, Mark's dad uh, was Vaughn Bodie, acclaimed underground comic artist, cartoonist. Um, but and who has like still a crazy following to this day and influenced people like Ralph Bakshi. Yeah, it's pretty much um, everybody who started the graffiti movement on the on the subway trains in New York City um, imitated my father's characters. You know, Cheech Wizard and the Lizards, and and it was um, you know um it's it's gone from there you know it's 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 rippled across the planet and now as a major part of my income it's it's going to these um spray paint festivals and doing murals and but um but kevin was a big fan um and you could see some of his influence my dad's influence on kevin in maybe the feet on the turtles you know like the three they're almost perfect. I never thought of that, but I totally see it now. No almost shit. Bird, yeah. bird-like feet. Yeah. Um, my dad used that a lot and um on some of his characters. And when he wasn't using frog feet, he would he would use or um he would use these uh bird feet and um big fat toes. And so um I think it had a little something to do with it. Kevin Kevin's in my dad's documentary. Um uh, tip in the hat to my dad is one of his early influences oh, in comics, awesome. and and so What's we met just so people can find it. What's that? What's the name of that documentary so people can find it? Well, it's not out yet. 
Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, still, still, in, still in the making, but it's called uh, the Book of Vaughn. Oh, awesome! Very cool. And uh, so, so anyway, Kevin and I bumped into each other at San Diego Comic Con, nineteen eighty six. I think it was eighty six, right? Yeah. And yeah. um, uh-huh. and he and and I was kind of you know like uh, in the midst of Miami Mice and and making money and off off the success of the turtles <laughs> and and then he turned it right around he said we should do we should do something together and i and so i said you want to do a guest spot in miami mice number four and so he was like absolutely and so that's how it started and so it was um uh and dave sim jumped in too so it was like dave sim you know it was cerebus and the ninja turtles and miami mice and and uh, that was issue four, and then the next thing was Kevin said, "Let's do a let's do a whole uh, a TMNT issue together," and that was uh, 1988, and uh, we went right into it, and uh, so we started working on uh, issue 18, where Bruce Lee meets the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, it's a very cool story where the turtles go to China. Yeah, I I mean I was a big Bruce Lee fan and and I thought what's what's more iconic than uh if if the turtles team up with Bruce Lee. I just thought that that was just the most the perfect combination of you know and um and also Kevin at that time uh at at the Ninja Turtle uh, well, no, it was San a, at San Diego Comic Con. Um, Kevin gifted me a little box of uh, the first turtle um, figures that were done by Palladium Books. And, for the role, oh, the Dark Horse ones. Yeah. Oh, is that Dark Horse? They're like yeah. little pewter figures, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Those are the first turtle things ever. I have. Yeah. You can't see them because they're like miniature. You have them. I have those back there somewhere. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah. Pete. Uh, Kevin and Pete had signed a bunch of them for San Diego, and uh, and Kevin uh, Kevin gave me one, and I still have that. I know oh. we have it in a little cube, and it's like the the actual figures for the role playing game. Yeah, they're like little metal guys. I think yeah, I've little heard. metal guys. Yeah, yeah. Like they're like these little things. Yeah, yeah, there they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's cool. right from the issue, the first issue. Yeah, yeah, the way they looked back then. That's the first, like, any turtle merchant. I think of anything that's yeah, the yeah it merchant. is, it is yeah. the first. Yeah, yeah. So, Kevin and I hit it off, and uh, you know, I was Molly and I, and our daughter Zara was still living in Berkeley at the time, and then uh, uh, I was working on issue number 18, the penciling. And um, I always insisted on making up my own bad guys because those are the fun, the fun things to draw. Oh, sure, it, yeah. Like the punching bags, you know. <laughs> Give me the punching bags. I'll I'll come up with s- some cool characters that 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 the turtles can can kick kick their butt and uh, and so I came up with that. I never paid much attention to Shredder or any of the other uh, typical ones at the time. Um, so, um, but, um, then the, uh, 1989 earthquake happened in, okay. in San Francisco and. Yeah. And then, uh, they said, oh, you probably want to get out of town. So they sent tickets for us, plane tickets for us to go visit Northampton. And, uh, I really liked it. It was like, it, it was funny cause my twin sister actually went to UMass and lived in Cambridge and Holyoke and different little towns in Western Mass and like 10 years earlier. So I was always running into people that thought I was her. So I kind of felt at home. It's like, oh, I'm living, I'm here visiting the same place that my sister lived at. So, um, so that was just a visit. But then um, they said, oh, why don't you think about doing some well mark you know they you know mark was working on on the comic books and they suggested maybe we should move out and and because our daughter's school was condemned i thought oh yeah this is a nice place i'll check it out for six months 
<laughs> and uh, and uh, we so ended up staying there for 13, 13 years. 13 <laughs> years, yeah. But like, but uh, once we moved out there, I was looking for work, and um, and the you know I'm a city person, and I've worked in television in the past. I worked at WNET, and I worked in TV in San Francisco. But when I was looking for a job in Northampton, the jobs were like, uh, pick blueberries, milk cows. <laughs> and it was like, not exactly what I know how to do. And, I, and one day I was just grocery shopping and I ran into somebody that worked there and she said she was going away for, you know, taking a vacation and, and they were planning on calling a temp agency to get some help for the office. And I said, don't call a temp agency, hire me, you know? So, so I went to the office and, and Pete said, well, you could work here until you get a real job. Uh, Cause we don't like, uh, we don't want, you know, girlfriends or wives of the artists really in the office, I think, you know? So, but the thing is like, they didn't have the background that I had, no one, in that office had the background that I had, you know, it was like that, you know, like Jim Prindle was an ex cop or something. I don't know what he was. <laughs> I don't know. Paul Jenkins was uh, a musician that worked in a hardware store and had broken his leg and he couldn't work. So he asked them if, I guess he told me he met them. Like he had, I think they made, did a, cover for an album that he was working on with his band and he knew them from that and so they they hired him to hang out so he could sit at a desk with his broken leg that's when I first wound up there and and I I always get such a kick out of the very first assignment I had was to uh, pick the winner from the box of Wheaties you know when you get like cereal and there's a contest in the back yeah and draw a turtle <laughs> and i had like thousands of, of letters that i had to open to pick the winner of the you know they had different categories for ages you know like four to five and teenagers <laughs> or whatever i had to pick the winners of the the back of the cereal box i just got a kick out of that it was so great was and i you know cereal or Wheaties? huh this like the turtle cereal or Wheaties? Yeah, or Wheaties. It was Wheaties. Yes, the turtle cereal hadn't existed then. It, sure. Yeah, there was no turtle cereal then. It was just like a, you know, a promo on the back of Wheaties yes. or we something. We came in, what, at 1990? Yeah, yeah 1990, we moved out there. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. The first you movie. You've done at least one or two issues by then, right? I did one issue. Just one before then? Okay. 18 and just pretty much come out when I when we moved. I mean, we started in 88, came out in 90 or something like that. Um, and then when we moved out there, we started right on, uh, right on uh, issue 32, which was uh, the, where the turtles go to Egypt. Got it. Okay. Actually made a, a character because April was already in there and, and at the time Kevin was married to April and she was the original April. Um, and so I, Molly always wanted to be an archeologist. And so I made her, uh, well, she was a belly dancer um, that she did uh, professionally for a while. And so I put, I had Molly go, you know, in, in April go to Egypt and, uh, and then the turtles get to save them. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a real. I actually. I sometimes I tell people, and they kind of look at me like they're nuts. So I'm an actual saved by the turtle person in the yeah, flesh. The issue is that issue is also <laughs> dedicated to you, and you're like um, you're like after April, the second biggest character in the story. And they, yeah. and they look at they look yeah. at her like. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> just just say yes <laughs> to, to whatever she says. Yeah. So Molly, how did that feel having like being part of the official turtle lore there? Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I just it was such a great place to work. It was like we had so much fun. We that was like the first studio was um 
in an apartment building. I remember it was up on the second floor, and it had uh, Center, you know, people live. Center Street? Yes. Um, it's sure. Center Street. No, I think so. Nope. I'm trying to remember. Six, is it? Anyway, it was mm. above the Iron Horse. Right. And that's the first office. And then when, when they got bigger, they, you know, they actually moved to like the big office that they stayed at for many years. Uh, and that's Market Street. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So, yeah, Center Street was the first one. Well, really, the you know, the other one was the Mirage one. That that, that wasn't a real but studio. But they, they were so big already, yeah. getting so popular that, um, like, a fan uh, sculpted uh, a Ninja Turtle uh, that said Mirage on it. It was, like, on their door when you come in to the original office. Okay. And it got stolen, like you know, like people are already like, you know, onto it, you know, like yeah. onto the popularity of it. You're talking about the one that was in the apartment building. Yeah, the one that was in the apartment I don't building. Even remember that. But um, that was great. Uh, the excitement in the air, I was like nothing I've ever experienced. That it was fun. It just everybody had, had, were bright eyed, and you know. The, there was no end in sight, you know. Uh, Ninja Turtles are just getting bigger and bigger by the second, you know. It. it, it we had to shred everything because people were going through the garbage. <laughs> you know? Kevin, Kevin, that's hilarious. That's Kevin, so Kevin and, like when I first went up there in '87, I think. Like uh, Kevin, uh, Mirage flew my my daughter. It was only like. Five, just four, four or five years old, and they flew us out there. I guess we were we we're just gonna kind of get the lay of the land, and and Kevin's house was a very humble little cabin up in Worthington, humble little place. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few years later, uh, it became this compound <laughs> with with indoor swimming pools and and and, and an un, uh, a fireproof bomb shelter under his studio for all his art collection and uh some rock and roll guy bought it after. electric car you know racing uh that took over like a big 30 foot area you know it's like everything a little kid never got well kevin got it that <laughs> Didn't at one have point, like an army tank or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. At one point, April bought Kevin an army tank for his birthday, and so because they were out in the woods and they had a lot of acres of land, we would have like paintball wars, you know, in the tank, <laughs> hiding around <laughs> in the woods in the tank with paintballs. I got to guns. I got to drive that tank once, <laughs> and only once. Um, because you mean drive it? What did I? You said you drew it. Oh no, no I drove it. Yeah. You drove it. <laughs> anyway, but I, I was. I'm. I'm learning to drive a tank. Um, no, n nobody telling me how to do it. Just left. You know, push left. You know, push push forward for for left. Pull, pull back. You know, like whatever. You know, it's like a tractor basically. And. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kevin's father was up on top with the machine gun. It was like an air, air powered machine gun. Didn't really fire anything real, but it sounded real. <laughs> and um, and he's up on top. I'm down below in this super claustrophobic little thing with a, just a little visor to look through. And I see this tree that's not more than four inches around. To my to my right, and I said, I'm just gonna purposely hit that tree with with the track, with the with the right hand track, and it'll it'll come down, and it'll look, you know, it'll be dramatic, and and I'll have a moment in the tank, you know. Well, that little tree was really rooted really well, <laughs> and the tank uh, tread traveled up it and almost tipped. The, the the tank over and it threw his dad off the top and so the tank almost if it gone a little further would have rolled over on his father and killed him <laughs> so um i heard Bodie, <laughs> you're done give me the keys <laughs> 
but it just kind of pivoted around and nobody got hurt, but thank God. But, but that was it for the tank, you know, <laughs> well, we had great times up there with the, with the paintballs, you know, there was like, he had, he had a setup for about 30, 40 people and we go out in the woods and hunt each other. And, um, there was many, many stories to be had out there. <laughs> Well, when I was working over there, like the thing that I worked on was with uh, Jim Prindle. He was like, took care of the licensing. Well, well, the way the, the thing was like, people would approach their agent uh, for, and a contract would be made. And then once the contract was signed, I would read the contract and see what it was that this company was going, wanted to license and i would either get them the artist or after a while we had a style guide which made things a lot easier but for the first few years we didn't have a style guide you know like it would be like ryan brown or or uh or steve levine or you know we would get i would go like all the artists were upstairs like dan berger and and michael dooney they would um you know they a licensee would say i want Blah blah blah. And you know, we would, Burger King yeah, would yeah, call and you. we would you know, and I would talk to them about what they wanted, and then uh, you know we would talk to the artists, and then they would do uh, uh, whatever, and then you know we were using a fax machine because there was no computers at first, except not for art. I mean, ja, gosh, once once you know you had computers, it yeah. made things. I mean, usually the when we first had computers, all I could do was write text, you know, it was like, you know, word processing, that was about it, no graphic files, really. And so um, everything was done to order. And then the, uh, like, the whoever was like the graphics person for the company would send me a dummy of whatever, and I would look at it and make sure the colors were correct and make sure that Michelangelo was the one that was talking about pizza and not like Raphael, you know, I had to make sure <laughs> that uh, it was, you know, that they had so many fingers and so many toes and their weapons were the correct colors. And, and, uh, and, and I actually had a cowabunga stamp and that's, I would stamp it cowabunga and sign my name. And oh, that's awesome. I have my cowabunga stamp someplace. I should you know, find. Sometimes, you know, here's a question. Sometimes they would use the style guide stuff, which is Steve with 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 uh, uh, Ryan Brown's inks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And then other times people would do their own thing, and sometimes it would be like, like Jim Engel, for example, would do like something like original, or whatever. Like, was there something that determined whether they would do this or that, or? I I don't know. I, I I wasn't part of that. I don't know. Okay. I don't even know who Jim Engel is. When I oh, was he did like some there. backpacks and stuff like that. He did like a lot of like Happy Meal toys and things like that. But he for turtles specifically, he did like folders and backpacks and sometimes like he uh, wasn't like a local Mirage guy. He was like uh, like they had overflow and they needed more people like yeah. uh, like Guy Gilchrist. Some people did work outside of Mirage because they just needed they had so much stuff to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was there, it was just the Mirage Studio guys. It wasn't okay. Uh, I wouldn't even know Jim Engel at all. I just, okay. you know, we had our style guide, and I sent it out, and um, and then I would keep like I, I, you know, the according to the contract, they would have to send us twelve of everything, and usually we, I kept one in an archive, like we had. Like the fun things, the really unique things. I had a shelf, kind of like yours, but on the wall that had like weird things like uh, pork rinds, I remember. Oh, that's you know, cool. Whatever odd thing that came up, I just, I had a display thing of my, my favorite crazy uh, licensed stuff. And, yeah. and like Pez dispensers, those were cool. Um, and then you came up with uh, the idea for yes. that. Yeah, yeah, but you know, every once in a while they would, I mean, when they were going crazy, like Playmates was going crazy, everything was getting turned into a turtle because it was such a big hit. You know, everybody wanted anything made of a turtle. And when I was a kid, my favorite thing was trolls. I thought they were <laughs> so cute. Okay. <laughs> so I said, how about Ninja Turtle trolls? And they went, oh, okay. Uh <laughs> 
write that down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have all of those here. Have you, have you, you have them? I have the set. I have all four of them, but yeah, uh, I will. Nope. they're all on the. They're all riding the blimp there. Molly's the one who came up with that. <laughs> but that's so cool. Okay, that's, that's the awesome. only. That's my only influence on turtle toys. <laughs> that's still that's <laughs> amazing, though. That, these are these are such unique, crazy. <laughs> They also made giant ones of them. Yeah, yeah, I, ha yeah, I had them both. Yeah, yeah, I had the big ones, the small ones. I have them all. But then I, I wound up, you know, I had nieces and nephews, and I gave them away. And that's still though, no, that's so cool. Oh, I had no idea. I'm so <laughs> I'm delighted by that. That's awesome. <laughs> so is that so? I mean, was that a suggestion you made to playmates? Or uh, probably to Jim Prindle, and he sent it to playmates. That's and so they cool. Ran I with it. it. They ran with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they ran. They yeah, they did all four of those, and they did the huge. Yeah, there giant were so one. many. Um, every there were so many turtle toys. What were different. some of the other like really weird, crazy things that went through there? Because there's like I, I, that's what fascinates me now. Because I got most of the stuff that I want. I'm a crazy collector person, so like I have all the stuff that I want. But like now, like when I see like random junk. Like that's the stuff that gets me excited. So, is there other weird stuff that oh, you remember? Yeah, I have somewhere. I wonder if I still have them somewhere. I know for a little while it was um, something that in Hawaii was a big hit. It was milk bottle tops. Do you know oh, what I'm pops. talking? About? Yeah, they were cardboard. Yeah, I think. yeah, that was a weird thing. I had never heard of them yeah. you know i wasn't familiar but i guess it was big in hawaii and somebody knew it was big in hawaii and they decided they had to be turtle ones so they all of a sudden started making all these milk tops sure so. mm -hmm. <laughs> silk dispensers oh yeah i mean they all, all that kind of stuff, stuff. yeah yeah on. yeah shampoo whatever those um, bottles were cool those shampoo bottles yeah, yeah. Like I think we got we got the prototype. You yeah, like, I you ended up one. with a prototype. Of yeah, that. Jim stayed at my house and left me uh <laughs> some stuff for uh, oh, crashing on things, her couch. <laughs> one of the things that I have that's really cool is uh at, at one time for I think it was Christmas or something, somebody had made I don't know if it was Christmas or maybe just somebody had somebody made bronze turtles like a set of bronze turtles. And uh, do you want to get mine from the little No. One? No. <laughs> it weighs about 300 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Send anyway. me a picture. That's awesome. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and I remember Pete bringing me to the office, bringing me to like the meeting room. And uh, and he goes, oh, which one would you want? Pick Molly. You could have whichever one you want. And I thought, I'm going to pick Splinter because there's four turtles, but there's only one Splinter. Oh, cool. I have a bronze Splinter and it weighs a ton. Mm. And Mark doesn't want to bring it. Is it, it like up. action figure sized? Uh, or no. bigger? Um, it's bigger. It's, it's about seven or eight inches, maybe 10 inches. Oh, my inches. God. And, and it's uh, bronze and it's yeah. got kind of marble base. So, yeah, it's real heavy. Um, you know, if you. He dropped it off the top of a house that would probably go through the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Mark, move it. <laughs> Mark, jumping back to you real quick. Um, you know, when you were putting together the the especially issue 18, you you know, you're co-credited with Eastman developing the 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 story and the art. What was the process like of like working with him on the actual issue? Do you remember? Yeah, I started like I said uh, before. I started. I said, "Let me let me come up with some bad guys," and I came up with Mushu Bean Curd and <laughs> and uh, you know and Buff Nordic and and like all all these these uh, you know these samurai goons, you know, and um, and so I I drew those first, and then he he redrew them and sent them back to me. And then I started to formulate a bit of a story, and then he threw in a bit of the story, and then. Uh, but basically, we were sticking to a, a parody of a Bruce Lee movie, you know, where it's like, you know, where, you know, uh, Bruce Lee's family has has an honorable 
a restaurant and the mushu bean curd comes in to, you know, like he wants his cut and he yeah. wants to take the, you know, the fake, uh, the fake uh, food over the over the the fresh food and you know that he's selling, <laughs> and and so they they force him, uh, the, uh, Bruce Lee's uncle to uh, to buy the the bad food and and like give them money for staying open, and uh, and then they get then it goes from there you know and uh they force the old man into it and then bruce lee gets involved and and uh and that's when the turtles uh are friends of of bruce's and <laughs> it was, what's really cool is like we had so much fun on it you know they're just i, I think even kevin would agree that th it was capital uh, for fun you know we were just like everything in that book was like fun to draw you know like just we we had such a great time doing it, it went so fast you know um, um but what's really neat is that um years now now it's like how many years later um um I noticed that there's a Bruce Lee exhibit down in Chinatown here in San Francisco, and they showed a picture of my comic book for some reason on on Comic Day, on Comic Book Day at the Bruce Lee Museum, and I'm like, oh, huh? and then uh, Molly and I went down there, and they had issue 18 under glass as, as things yeah. around the world inspired by Bruce. That's and and so I was like, wonderful. I was, oh, wow. I was, I was so humbled. And so, you know, like on my knees over that, I, I just like, it was like a thank you from beyond from Bruce, you know, Bruce was like, ah, you know, <laughs> that's so cool. I had no idea. Such a big fan of Bruce. Lee, oh, I was so always from was a, from a best. kid. I was a big Bruce Lee fan. You know, my, my yeah. parents took me to the drive-in to see fists of fury and, and, um, a couple other movies. Um, uh, I don't think he hadn't, he was still alive at that point, I think. And yeah. And, um, and from that moment on, I was just a little, a little boy, but from that moment on, I was a big Bruce Lee fan. I, I just like, he was the real superhero, you know, there was no ifs, ands, or bots. He was, he was the real thing. And uh, <laughs> so it was a natural to put them t together in that issue. But Kevin and I just gelled. I mean, we, uh, and then, and then Eric Talbot came in to, uh, to help ink. Oh, the, right. Yeah. And and then uh, and so we became a team, and um, and and then me and Eric became best friends uh, when we moved out there, and so Eric and I did a lot of things together. We traveled together, and it was an amazing time. Um, and uh, I was close with Kevin, but even closer to Eric at that time, and uh, we we just made a real good combination you know the the three of us just real highlight of, of that issue to me of 18 is the really awesome turtle cost or tur turtles in costume that you do there are all these various chinese gear and it's super cool and unique to that issue there's one point right. where they have like this thing painted on their shell on the front of it and like they're in the straw hats at one point like there's really cool turtle renderings in that that I just love that stuck with me since I first read it so oh thanks it, it was it was like a, it was a pleasure to, to come up with that stuff and and I think I'd come up with a basic idea and a sketch and then Kevin would refine it and um and I was actually taking real mo turtle motifs from uh Japanese motifs that uh, uh over the centuries and so I was I was doing a lot of background work trying to trying to make um things uh as authentic as i possibly could now the next uh, thing you did was 32 which looks like you i mean you must have maybe you started just before you know maybe probably when you moved out there because it came out august 90 so would that have been like yeah we were already out there yeah yeah, okay. yeah. and 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 that yeah and kevin was starting 
tundra and and so um i was finishing cobalt 60 which was a saga i did for epic illustrated you know for marvel's epic illustrated and that was like one of my first professional jobs in the early 80s um mid 80s and um and cobalt 60 was one of my dad's creations and kevin said finish it you know i'll I'll pay you to finish it and so um we were up there at tundra and um there was mirage and tundra and they were both separate from each other and 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 uh tundra i was a tundra person so but i was i was working on on uh issue 32 up in tundra there and cobalt 60. Yeah, so we never really ever worked in the same office. Like I was, I was saying, like you, you probably didn't work in the Mirage offices, right, Mark? Never, no, he didn't, never no. did. No. no. Um, Tundra but, gets a nice shout out in that issue thirty two. It it does. Yeah, the turtles say haven't shipped. <laughs> you tell us. Well, okay. I, I, I have uh, to look. <laughs> I have to look at that one. Uh, um, but uh, a I um. Uh, you know, I met Steve Barron, who did the first Turtle movie. Oh, yeah. The director of, uh, and he wanted to do a Cobalt 60 stop animation. And so we all went to London and uh, Steve Barron was going to, was trying to make this Cobalt 60 thing a reality. And um, mean, meanwhile, the second movie was starting, the, the teenage, uh, teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two was was starting but um but we we had a hell of a time in in london because we stayed at the browns hotel which is the most posh like queen victoria stayed Uh, there okay i mean it's like that you know like the the royal family this is where you go if you can't stay in the palace or whatever (laughs) i don't know how Whose idea that no, was? I don't know, maybe Paul, because he, <laughs> he. We didn't he, belong there, whatever. Or maybe, maybe <laughs> the English agent. What's, oh, what's the famous British mystery writer, Agnes? I forget her name. Um, what was Agnes Christ, Christie? Oh, Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. Oh, okay. I sure. watched an, uh, a documentary about Agatha Christie, and when the war was going on and she lost one of her mansions became taken over by the British army or something. She uh, moved into the Browns hotel because she she could still live her classic British life at the Browns. So so we, there's all of us in leather jackets in this really (laughs) proper, I mean, most proper, (laughs) Uh, hotel in London. I mean, stuffiest hotel in London. Uh, and and Kevin and Eric and and, and uh, who else was there? Paul. Paul and yeah. Um, we're all we're all staying there. And I showing up. I'm waiting for our limo to show up. <laughs> and the butler's like, "So, Mister Bode, <clears throat> um, what?" What band are you in? Are you some rock band or something? <laughs> and I was like, uh, no, we're comic book artists. And, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it was total undeservings. He was in, you know, he couldn't even hang out around me. <laughs> and and he, and and, uh, and I, I I I just kind of put my chin up, you know, at his reaction, you know, because I, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and and then, uh, you know, uh, and then we get in our limo and go. And uh, and uh, uh, the next day, Alan Moore, who wrote Watchmen and, you know, sure. Moore, <laughs> hey, he's the biggest <laughs> guy. Anyway, shut up for tea. we show up for tea and, and we're at the Browns and and then, and the same butler, uh, Mr. Bowdy, um, we must have a proper attire for tea. You must have a suit and tie, please. And I was like, I, I uh, don't, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I will we'll, we'll take care of that for you, sir. And, and he comes over with this 
like David Byrne size <laughs> jacket and tie that hangs to the floor, <laughs> puts it on me, and Alan Moore's in a proper tie, suit and tie. He knows where he is. <laughs> And he goes, suiting for you. <laughs> and that's all. Uh, that was like our our our, uh, our tea with um, Alan Moore at the Browns. <laughs> wow. But, now, the, the, the thing with Steve Barron, the stop motion thing, it didn't. It, it didn't. You know, or... like, like many Hollywood course, things. Yeah. things um, later on, uh, Zack Snyder, after he did 300, came after a Cobalt 60 uh, live action movie. He. He really loved the comic as well and actually got the option money and everything. But but then he got Batman and Superman and uh, <laughs> Justice League. And it's, it's just like the list keeps going on. It, there's no way that we can compete with that, you know. Of course, yeah. We're just kind of waiting, you know, like Zach, Zach says he loves the comic and uh, he, and maybe he'll come back to it one day. But, but really, uh, the Cobalt is still... Uh, it's nice to be wanted, you know. It's yeah, nice. man, fingers crossed. Jeez, I hope that works out. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I arranged when we were in London was uh, visiting Creature, uh, the Creature Shop, Jim Henson. Oh yeah, Jim Henson's Creature Shop was out there where they built the turtles out there. Yeah, because I had missed out on being around when they were making the first movie, but I just, you know, being a Jim Henson fan and so, uh, he's such a beautiful person and by then when we went there i think he had just recently died i'm pretty sure he wasn't around. he died in may, may uh may 16th 1990 yeah. oh okay so yeah it was right after the movie hmm. yeah so i you know i so i thought i can't be in london with people from mirage studios and not go see creature shop so we you know I, we arranged a trip there and that was wonderful were the turtles or Token Raza or any of the stuff from the movies there? Yes, yes, the, they were in the back room. Uh, there was a there was a yeah. I mean, there's the guy who puts all the uh, mechatronic stuff, you know, all the mechanical giz gizmos and all the solenoids, and he puts them all together. And it was like this little wizard guy in the back, <laughs> and he's amongst. <laughs> piles and piles of, of little dials and, and solenoids and, and wires hanging from the ceiling and and here's this little wizard of a guy, you know, <laughs> you know like, oh what? What do you want to see turtles to you? And he and he and like and he pulls down, you know, one of the skeletons of the turtle heads and it still worked. You know, he made it made it blink and stuff. Oh wow. He just had to hook it up to a battery or something and and it started. It still worked, but it what didn't have the, a lot of the um, like some of the things were missing from it. It looks like it just had the basic skin over it, but it but the 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 top of the head was missing, and you know. The, but it was it was fascinating to see the guy who made it work. You know, that's like, cool in his environment. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Let's see, Mark. You also did a few short stories. Uh, you did uh, later on in the run. Uh, you did a Ninjara origin story and an Archie special, and mm. also maybe my favorite crazy little turtle story where the turtles are—I mean, turtles are stranded on a desert island, and then Raph eats a bunch of poisonous nuclear nuclear uh, a bunch of poisonous radioactive food. He blows up this like raft-sized character, and they. The other turtles and, sail on him back to New York. <laughs> it's the most trippy. And I, I, I don't know I read what this when I was a kid. Like I read this when I was a kid, and I was like, what the fuck is this?" Was, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was waiting to say about those stories because I love them. That, no, I, 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 you know, if I was going to do kid stories, you know, it, it better keep my interest. So I, I really went uh, all out on those. I think there was there was another issue that had. Um, one of the characters had the choice of like being put to death either by two Dobermans or 20 Chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> and he chose the Chihuahuas, which was the wrong thing to do. Because <laughs> the Chihuahuas would just, you know, just eat you alive in seconds. 
Whereas the, the, the Dobermans would, you know, there's only two heads, but the 20 heads trying to eat your, eat your legs is not, you know, a preferable way to go. But, um, yeah, I, I had some friends with Steve Murphy was, was, um, the, I think the editor on that, Archie. Oh yeah. Archie. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I also did a uh, times pipeline, which that was, was, that was the next one I was going to bring up, which is like, like the purest kind of story in that way. Cause it was like turtle and your, some of your dad's that, characters. That was, yeah, nobody, um, it was just, I used Larry Todd as a writer who, who I, he was my mentor from when I was a child. He worked with my dad and, and he wrote Cobalt 60 and, um, and he uh, did a lot of covers for Eerie and Creepy and Vampirella magazine back in the 60s and 70s um, with my dad. My dad would do the pencils and he would do the oil paints. Um, so, um, so I used Larry Todd. And um, and I did all the art myself this time because Kevin was too busy and um, and Eric was working on Melting Pot uh, with Kevin and so I did the whole thing myself and uh, it was where the Ninja Turtles go to a Bodhi planet and so I I was able to cross the turtles with my other hero, which was my father. So it was like, uh, you know, it's a full circle thing, you know, like Bruce Lee and the turtles and my father and the turtles. Yeah. So I was able to go to a Bodhi planet with the turtles and, and slightly change them, morph them into Bodhi lizards. Yeah. The faces are all changed. The issue. Yeah. Just while they're on the planet, then they change. Yeah. 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 But that I had was never read that up until uh, a few days ago. Cause I just like, it was a it was a barrage special, so I some of those those are harder to get a hold of, and I yeah, it was very hard to get. Yeah, I think there was only twenty thousand printed versus a hundred thousand of the other issues, so that's that's why that one's so hard to get. I I only have a few issues myself for that. It's so worth checking out for those who haven't, because it's the, like one of the trippiest turtle stories ever. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Uh, you know, Molly, I'm I'm curious about this because you so you you arrived 1990, so that's right when like Turtle Mania is like hitting huge. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, curious how like Mirage changed. Like, did you see it get bigger and then? Like, oh yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. It was like it was insane. It was like. It was insane. It was like now I know it's like when. You know, sometimes, you know, people would just show up at the office and and uh, we were always trying to, like, keep uh, the crazies out, <laughs> you know. When you've got a million people, there's the, X yeah. amount of people that are probably out of their minds. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, some, you know, I was always, you know, for the longest time because it would be like, I remember somebody would call and say, Oh, do you have a press agent? And 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 I asked Jim, Jim, is there a press agent? He goes, You, you're the press <laughs> agent. You know, whatever. All these things just kept getting bigger and bigger. It was like, you know, from um just like so much. One of the things that I, I really, really love to this day is the influence that the turtles have. Like I'm still friends with fans that I met you know, back in the 90s. And, and there's like one in particular, th uh, this woman, Marielle, she she was um, a fan that would draw comics and mail them to us from France. And we got a kick out of it because she was like, she was like 18 years old. And most of the other people that would draw comics were like little kids. But sure. she had this whole fantasy thing of, uh, of uh, you know, the turtles being like her boyfriends or whatever. And so we, we always got a kick when, when Muriel's something came from Muriel and I go to the other women in the office. It's like, Oh, let's check out her <laughs> comic and stuff. And then one day we got a letter and it said, hi, I live in Holyoke now. And Holyoke is like the next town over. And I went, Ooh, she, <laughs> she's close. She's not that far away she's close and I thought well you know I thought let me write her back and and see you know it, it might be fun to meet her 
And so I wrote her back and, you know, if she, you know, I told her if she ever wanted to come visit the office, she was invited. And, um, and she didn't show up for a couple of weeks. So I thought that was a good sign because yeah. if she was a horrible person, she would have just showed up like the day she got the letter. The next morning. Yeah. Just like one day later, she didn't show up for a couple of weeks <laughs> and, and we had so much fun. It was like, I still know her. I, you know, she comes, if we do a, tr a show in Europe or whatever, she'll come to it. I've, I've met her family and a few times and she wound up marrying a martial artist, oh, you know, wow. you know, and then there, and the, this other fan, Rosemary, she's another one really wonderful woman and she wound up you know she's like a black belt karate person you know these people that i met as teenagers they were turtle fans and and they just go on to you know it's it's interesting like the the influence that they had they had you know as as adults you know they just were so inspired and and then there's michelle ivy like that she's like the biggest turtle fan absolutely yeah yeah she uh, She's, you know, at first she was doing her, I felt really bad when she first contacted our office because they kept, you know, she was doing parties dressed like a turtle and they were so like against anybody, you know, copyright infringement and all this stuff. They had so many rules and I felt bad. So, you know, when, when, you know, Cheryl had to tell her, you know, you can't really do that, be making money because it's our property. So she stopped doing it. But, um, she and became so uh, i mean she later got the yeah she the okay. became no she became like i mean she's like the ninja turtle expert but she was such a big fan that one time when you know there was such a thing as variety newspaper that we would get in our office i read that i think it was vh1 was doing totally obsessed on, on on the yeah totally obsessed <laughs> yeah. yeah and so i called her and i said michelle this program has your name on it you should contact them and get on that really? show. <gasps> yeah and she did and and that gave her like all of a sudden she you know that put her out in the public there being the turtle expert and she afterwards she i think she was hired once to be a script reviewer for one of the movies maybe the, yeah, she, uh, i think the 07 one uh, and michelle's become a friend of mine and and, and she's oh, like yeah been on this podcast and we've met a few times oh, and, oh cool and cool. like she's but she if, if there is an official number one turtle fan and it's michelle ivy and always will be yeah she sure is yeah. yeah yeah and um i remember she got approached by what is that model's name that does smiles i remember she had some kind of one of these models uh, that had her own TV show years ago that she wanted to give her a makeover. And Michelle said, no, I don't need a makeover. <laughs> <laughs> she was genuine and she wanted to stay the way she is. <laughs> what were like, uh, what were Kevin and Peter like in the old days? Like pers like to work with pe personality wise? Personal well, you know, Pete always just stayed with the guys. He was like, Kevin was a partier. He was, I, you know, Kevin became a millionaire when he was like 23 years old. And, and uh, Peter Laird was married, had a child, had a ha, he had a bookstore when like when I mentioned that my twin sister lived in Western Mass when she was going to college, she would she remembers uh, Peter's bookstore. He had a little tiny bookstore. I think it was called like the one man bookstore because only one person fit in it or something because it was so small. But I think that was his business, yeah, you know, when he met he Kevin. He was more mature when, when yeah, they met but, him. but Kevin was always, you know, up for the party and and uh, and um, where uh, Pete liked to ride his motorcycle and buy motorcycles. Kevin was always buying hot cars, <laughs> and uh, uh, oh, but I do remember one time Peter did surprise me. He bought a Hummer, and I, I remember asked, telling him once, Pete, I never asked you for anything, but I want to ride in that Hummer. Yeah. <laughs> and he took me out to this muddy field and scared me to death, <laughs> <laughs> bouncing around all over the place. Oh, and then he, he was telling me about that Hummer when I had her on. She was telling me about that. that was when Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger was the only other person <laughs> with, with a private Hummer. 
Yeah, and, and he, he also got a segue, too. I remember right in the segue for a few seconds, I rode a segue in the parking lot of Mirage. And he was always into, like, the latest uh, Mac. He had Macs that oh, sure. I think one was called Next or something. I remember he had this very rare Mac. And, I, and I, I, you know, I'm always wondering if if I really remember this guy. I remember this English guy coming to our office and hanging out with Jim Prindle and and Peter. And I could have sworn when I saw his name, this name in print again, I thought, oh, he's the guy that designed, did a lot of design stuff for, for Mac. And I'm pretty sure he came to visit our office because Peter was such a big, you know, all the artists had Macs. And of course, in the office, we had to use PCs. Yeah. But um, but I always, you know, went and got tips on how to do art. I learned Photoshop from Dan Berger, and I still to this day thank him for it because he showed me how to use Photoshop. Oh, and that, cool. was, that was a big help, you know, with Mark when we did stuff at home. And Kevin, Kevin uh, our, our, our favorite thing to do was was to have some cocktails and, and go through Kevin's art collection <laughs> and open his vault. He had a vault. He bought a bank. Right. And, he and liked in the vault, <laughs> he had his art collection. And so we'd, we'd, uh, we'd grab a stack or two as much as we could carry and bring it up upstairs to the bar and, um, and make ourselves some cocktails and go through all the original Electras and all the original oh, yeah. Dave McKean, uh, you know, originals that he bought and the Corbins and the, you know, uh, the Frank Millers and the, like, it, it was just unbelievable. It yeah. was like the best museum, comic <laughs> museum you could ever experience. And it was right in your hand. Yeah, one time yeah. he said, oh, you want to read Arkham Asylum? And I said, oh, yeah. And he just hands me a stack of original art. Whoa! <laughs> That's amazing. So, and then he opened up the museum, which was yeah. wonderful. Words and mm -hmm. Pictures Museum. Oh my God, that was such a wonderful, wonderful museum. His his art collection was second to none. At, at one point, um, as he was going into the museum, and uh, um, he just, I mean, Jack Kirby's like original combat uh jack kirby stories and 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 like it's, and we're actually handling this stuff you know yeah. it was just it was an exciting exciting time and uh and uh and then the museum opened up and it all you know had a venue uh, it didn't last long because it was tanking it was it was tanking money like beyond what Kevin was expecting, you know, he expected it to yeah. um, to to uh, uh, be a write off of some kind, but but it, it just really um, it started sucking money like crazy, and so he, he 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 closed it. But but while it was going, it was it was the best thing around. It was just, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it was just so good. <laughs> so Molly, you were there till ninety nine. So like. Mm -hmm. You know, Turtle Mania started dying down in like the mid '90s, and then well, it would go up and down. It would go right. up and down. I, I I remember I had so many times when we thought a movie was going to get made, like because you know there was the the third movie, the one where they go to Japan, and then after that we would you know a couple a year and a half would go by and all of a sudden it'd be like oh so and so wants to make a movie you know and all this excitement would happen and all these you know storyboards and and stuff to read and and uh, and then you know it would just like fade away hmm. so they go just, into holding patterns you know yeah. these movie ideas sometimes and it, they so spin very, out sometimes very up and down very up and down so i mean yeah but the first gosh maybe the first five years were pretty exciting. I mean, you know, there'd be a time when uh, some like, oh God, when we went to Paris, when we went to Angoulême, that was wonderful. You know, it would be like we would have a staff meeting and it'd be, who wants to go to London? And everybody raised their hands and everybody went. 
<laughs> you know, oh, let's go to Paris. Everybody raises their hand. Everybody goes. So it was like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Was it much different, like, like 97, 98? Like, was it much quieter then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they had laid off a few people. And, okay. And started so. winding down. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I've always had a um, family business and comics, so I wasn't as dependent on on the uh, and the income as, as some of the other artists were. And... Sure. Um, but they were doing the comics. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the comics kept going. The comics yeah, I mean, always uh, kept going. I, I just, I, I didn't depend on that. I, I, I just relied more on on my family's background again, and went back to what I was doing more and more uh, before. And then uh, tattooing. But then I got into tattooing, you know, and <laughs> which you know, I, I ended up tattooing uh, my first Ninja Turtle on on Michelle. <laughs> really? I, yes, <laughs> the first. Turtle, I think I ever did was on her and, and her first tattoo or first. Oh no shit! I didn't know that. Nah, yeah. And, well, you uh, and Talbot got into that. Talbot got into it recently. Yeah, yeah. I I was doing it for about twenty five years, and um, just recently, um, just got back to comics and and gallery shows and murals, um, because I I was just making more money doing that, um when it came down to the crunch, you know, crunching down the numbers. Luckily before COVID he quit. <laughs> right. So I, I recently, in 2009, uh, 2019, I, I stopped um, uh, after 25 years of tattooing, but I, I just felt like I did it all. I did all the, the sleeves. I, I, in fact, a friend of mine that's coming over in a little bit, I did his whole, a sleeve on his whole leg of of he just he was a ninja turtle fan and he just wanted everything ninja turtles you know he said just make like like i'm a i'm a comic book uh, like a piece of paper and just <laughs> just draw what you want to draw of the ninja turtles on me and so he's got an, a fantastic uh array of of characters uh done in my style uh, on, oh on wow that's side. awesome he went to portsmouth he was there yeah. yeah, and he's also strong. going yeah. to. Uh, uh, also owns five hundred <laughs> pinball machines. <laughs> he fixes <laughs> the fun guy to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, he's in the pinball business, um, and he'll be going to Maui. That's the other Turtle Cons. Yeah, the Turtle Con. You heard about that? December seventh and eighth in Maui. There's going to be another Turtle Con. I didn't know about this. Wow, cool. Yeah, so all the they're flying all of us out again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Know, so. I don't think Pete will be there, but um, but I, I think Kevin and um, Eric definitely. Eric, Dan, um, Jim. Uh, oh, I had so much fun with Kathy Lawson <laughs> in yeah. Portsmouth. I was gonna say, how great was that Portsmouth show? Because that uh, I mean, I met you guys, you two there, and Pete was there, Kevin was there, Ken Mitroni, Chris. I, I, yeah. I, I have forgotten, like. We used to go on, on a, we used to have a tour bus in the early 90s. You know, we actually on a tour bus that the Rolling Stones were on the week before. <laughs> and and, the, and, the, and the, the bus driver is like complaining, like, I don't, you know, I don't know what band that was, but, you know, they were puking all over the, in the back <laughs> there and it stunk and it's still and it's like is that what that smell is and it, it was actually like you know the rolling stones partying on the bus the week before but we we went to all the you know the venues and signed turtle heads and signatures turtle head signature turtle head signature and it we we do that till you know till we you know, till it was dinner time or whatever, we, you know, it was time to stop. They'd have to stop the line. It, it was a never ending line. And um, at, at night, there'd be so many Ninja Turtles blazoned <laughs> onto my eyelids. I'd see a million Ninja Turtles on my eyelids. And it, literally, I'm not joking. And um, this show in uh, Portsmouth was. Like I hadn't done that for dec a few decades now, but 
wow, you know, here we go again, you know, like it's the same thing, you know, Ninja Turtle Head, Ninja Turtle Head, Ninja Turtle Head, Ninja Turtle <laughs> and And my, my line was consistent. It wasn't five hours like Peter's or it's Kevin's. It's amazing but, to me that he showed up. He did it twice, two days in I a row. I was so stunned. And like, it's such a, yeah. like, it was so great. To see. I, I'd met him once or twice in the past and I'd sign some stuff, but I was just like, I just, it was just so grateful that he like, Oh yeah, like yeah. made it out. It was, so well. it was awesome. So yeah, cool. I think the love gave him the energy, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, and um, but uh, the second day of signing turtle heads, my hand stopped listening to me. <laughs> and was like, yeah, a ninja turtle head. <laughs> Trot, <laughs> and the hand was like no, <laughs> and it, it wouldn't, you know. So it, I had to start taking breaks because it, it just went, it went on for too long, you know. Like my the muscle memory goes on for so long, and then uh, I mean, even with uh, my stamina from tattooing, um, it's still uh, drawing a ninja turtle head and doing it nonstop for six hours. And then the next day, nonstop, and you go into the third hour, my hand was, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so I had to cut the line, you know, or Molly cut the line, and, and I disappear for a little while and, and run my hand under cold water and come back. But, yeah, those those were the days. It was it's like just like the old days, you know, like when we just signed till we couldn't do it or, you know, we had to cut the line off, you know. I, I'm I'm lucky I got to you before that because I I got a turtle head. You, you were turtle head. Uh, I did a poster and had everybody sign that. And you, 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 one of your turtle heads is staring at me right now. So, ah, cool. Last question I have for each of you is who, who's your favorite turtle and why? That's all. Sorry to keep you this long. <laughs> well, uh, I, I I've always said Raphael. I mean, uh, you know, he's he's uh, the the moody one, <laughs> and he's the dark one. He's the the original, the, the way the original turtles were, you know, like yeah. he embodied that the bat, the most um, is the only thing I could think of why I like him so much, but it it's it's more like I was like the old gritty adult turtles that, that it started with, you know, and it, it, later on they became more goofy and, and fun loving, you know, which which made them endearing to to the masses. But I like Raphael. I don't know. Well, that's what I what I'm thinking of totally <laughs> left field. There, my favorite character was Krang's android, Krang and his android body. Really? Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> that was my favorite. He said, and, and the Ninja Turtle. I know, I know, but I just, you know, that's fine. I, I, you know, maybe you. Know, that was the, the most wacky idea of yeah. all. I must say. Like, <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate talking to you, and it was just a serious pleasure. So, thank you so much. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, okay, thank Brian. you. Thank Good you. Good night. Good night.